Hello Wolfpack, uh, it goes without saying, as predicted at the 60k region, the market is crashing massively, uh, and we are heading rapidly towards my target, my personal target that I've held since almost close to the top now, a little bit below the top, at 200 week SMA on Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin will bottom out on this green line here on the 200 week SMA, wherever that may be. I previously said November. Look, the time frame is pretty clearly very uh, flexible here. I, I don't think we're actually going to take that long to get there anymore. And so I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to distance myself from that uh, prediction as much as possible. But it is worth noting that when I made that prediction, I was telling over and over and over again, the time frame is very flexible. The point is the time frame doesn't matter. The price matters. Uh, and I think we're going to be heading towards this 200 week uh, SMA. Uh, you know, until proven otherwise, if something happens on the charts that, that I like the look of that looks okay, you know, who knows? I might change my prediction. I might say, hey, I think the bottom's in now. But with the, mar you know, the global stock market crashing, interest rates going up, you know, and Bitcoin obviously losing every single major support zone and every single major structure <laughs> doesn't look good, guys, at all. Uh, and, and, you know, that's as predicted. And I told you guys to re... Well, I, I'm not going to say, you know, I told you guys because this is your choice, but I have said over and over and over again, de-risk in the market, don't buy in, don't long, don't use leverage. This doesn't look good. No one really believed me. And now, obviously, as we enter the 30K region, people start to believe you. But it's always too late. Um, and, and the point is, the point I want to make, I'm not here to boast, but the point I want to make uh, is Bitcoin's not looking good. Uh, it was dropped out of its descending wedge formation, which was one of the last uh, bullish remaining kind of uh, things left on the charts here. We've dropped that, dropped the downside. We are holding this secondary, this lower uptrending red line for support currently. Okay, we closed just above that and we've bounced off of it here, which is good. All right, so we've got a little, a little bit of support. But we have to keep in mind that every single support line, you know, in the past that everyone said we're going to bounce off of haven't actually resulted in any bounce. So it's illogical to think that this is the one, right? Because we've lost about six or seven at this point. Uh, and every single one of them, the bulls started posting on Twitter about it. And then they just went silent once we lost it. And we've seen that happen multiple times here. But yeah, we've got that one uh, coming up from here in December 2020 all the way through to June and July and, and testing it again. So look, we may see a bounce. Uh, I've never said we won't see a bounce. I don't know what's going to happen in the short term. You know, I, I, I can make predictions all I want. Uh, but what I do know is the longer term trend. Uh, and that is very much downward. And that is very much pointing towards a 200 week SMA until proven otherwise. Uh, and that's consistent, even if we see a bounce. Okay, so what I want to cover in this video is, is a few things. First of all, the three day RSI. Second of all, uh, my invalidation point is changing. Uh, and third of all, what we look like on Bitcoin in general. And you know, uh, I, I want to change my kind of invalidation point here. I previously said, as you guys would know, that if we get back above 53K, we're going to be bullish in the market again. Uh, I'm lowering that down now. I'm lowering that down to around 48K. Uh, and, and the reason being is because 48K is just like 53K, uh, a pretty major resistance zone. We've, held, we've, we've tested resistance and support multiple times. Uh, also, you'll notice that uh, the 53K uh, invalidation point was based off the fact that the bull market support band was in that area. The bull market support band is very well trending downwards towards 48K. And by the time we get there for a retest if we do uh that will be where it is gorging channel is the same uh ikamoka cloud is the same as well and the 50 and the 200 day are the same so 48k is definitely the most important place right now that we need to be breaking for bitcoin uh bringing that down a little bit from 53k 53k seems a little bit too high if you asked me two weeks ago i would have said 53k for sure uh right now 48k is the breakout point if we break 48k we're bullish in the market again and we'll possibly go to all-time highs in fact we'll most likely go to all-time highs but we're still a long way away from 48k uh, 40k is 32% uh, upwards, and, and so you know I don't think a dead cap bounce is going to take us 32% upwards. Uh, and I, w you know, look, I'm I'm not saying that we won't see a bounce on this red line here. We could very well see that. It's way too early to tell. We've just has had this wick to the downside. Uh, we could see we had massive ascending volume in this downward trend. I was saying throughout this entire retest of the top of the wedge here that hey, I don't think the wedge is going to break. Uh, I can't be certain, but I don't think it's going to break because the volume doesn't look good. And then when the volume started decreasing on the downtrend, I said, yeah, this is very unlikely to break to the upside. And we've broken it to the downside now uh, on Bitcoin. And, you know, the volume is just massive on the last daily candle. It's obviously not going to be that much on this daily candle. You know, it's just impossible to top that. Uh, and so this daily candle, I'm kind of expecting a little bit of consolidation here. What we can see is that Bitcoin is in between this uptrending red line and the bottom of the wedge. So there's two very clear scenarios that could play out here. One of which is we break back into the wedge. Okay, that would be a bullish scenario. So we break back into the wedge, flip that red line at the same time, and break to the upside. Very much possible. All right. Another scenario is that we reject off of this wedge here and go below the red line. 
Honestly, it's way too early to tell. We don't really have enough information at all to, to kind of be decisive in what's going to happen here. We just have to wait and see. Uh, but what I can say is quite a bit about Bitcoin in the macro scale, and enough, not much of that is good at all. In fact, let's go to the daily chart here, and we can see just before we scroll over, we've seen a bearish MACD cross as well. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, let's go to the three-day chart here. Uh, and we can see on Bitcoin that the massive uptrending line on the three-day chart, let's go to the index so we can get a bit of a, bit of a more clear look. Uh, the uptrending red line here on the RSI on the three-day chart that has been forming since late or yeah, late 2018, so about three years, uh, has actually been broken to the downside, confirmed by your three-day close. And so we've lost that major uptrending line, which by the way, was one of the last supporting evidence for a bullish bounce, right? We've lost that. So that's a bearish indicator. However, uh, usually when we lose the lines like this, we come back up and we retest at the upside and then break down again. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the short term here on Bitcoin, we see a quick bounce back up maybe to 40K and reject off 40K. Something like that could potentially happen. Uh, you know, it really is speculation. Uh, but the point is, nothing really is going to get us bullish again unless we break 48K. Nothing. Nothing at all, no matter what happens. So keep that in mind. Uh, until we break 48K, we're trading downwards to the 200 week. Uh, I've said... Previously as well, but I think 25k is going to be the bottom. Uh, that just keep, keep in mind, right? Keep in mind, people like to simplify things quite a bit. Keep in mind that prediction is based off the 200 week, and since I said the 200 week is going to be at 25k in November, that's based off that. So I, my prediction is actually the 200 week, not 25k. Wherever the 200 week is, I think we're going to bottom out on it. It doesn't matter where it is. Right now, it's at 19.2k. All right. Could be 25K, could be 30K, who knows? Could be 22K. The 200 week is my prediction. I think we're going to bottom out on the 200 week SMA. We've got to keep an eye on that. Uh, so we've lost that three day chart uh, RSI uptrend, which is very, very bad. Uh, and then another thing I want to bring up as well is uh, the bull case that I was outlining earlier. Let's go to the daily chart here on the index. And we can see there was a bull case I was outlining earlier uh, that I wasn't confident in. I just pointing it out because I like to point out all scenarios. I don't like to just be biased in my analysis, right? And it was something like this. Uh, where we were seeing this kind of up uptrending line here from around November, tested through here, tested through here, and we were forming it, and we bottomed out here in January on this line. And I thought, hey, maybe this would be the catalyst for uh, the descending wedge breakout, potentially. What we can also notice is this is actually a uh, ascending wedge formation. Uh, and so... The fact that we've now broken that to the downside is very bearish. Ascending wedge formations are bearish to begin with, but we've broken that long-term wedge to the downside as well. And so, look, I would not be surprised, and I don't think anyone should be surprised at this point, if we actually trend downwards below the 30k support zone towards the 200-week SMA. Uh, you know, the, the global market right now in the traditional markets and the crypto market it looks terrible. Everything's appalling. Interest rates, Fed's doing everything bad. Crypto's crashing massively way faster than predicted. Uh, it's pretty obvious people are losing massive amount of faith in the bulls. And all the people, you know, the only thing people have as a counter argument is that, oh, the market's fearful. You should buy the dip because when people are scared, you should buy the dip because that makes sense, right? What about 2018? What about 2014? Right? These are times in which the market dropped 90% each time. They kept going downwards. The dip didn't matter, right? It crashed. Right? I think I think it's very clear at this point that it's a bear market. I've been saying this literally since the high 58k, 550k area, low 60k area. No one's believed me. You know, I, I guess a few people have, a few of my supporters, but on a larger scale, everyone kind of just thought I was full of it. Uh, and they kept just buying the dip. And this is just a lesson to you guys that if you just keep buying the dip brainlessly, even though major support is being lost you know, on a daily basis, you're going to end up getting burnt like this. And, you know, I, I would never wish that upon anyone, but it's just the reality of the situation. You're playing in a financial market. This is not a video game. Uh, this is a very, very serious thing, which you can lose basically 90% of your net worth if you play your cards wrong. Uh, and so caution is the most important thing in this market, not profit. Caution, not profit. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll come back with another Bitcoin update, possibly later tonight or uh, as this move progresses more. But ultimately what I'm expecting for Bitcoin in the short term, who knows, could go up to 40k and reject or could just go straight down to 30k. Uh, in the longer term, I think we're going to end up at the 200-week SMA. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.